Close your eyes, take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing in the body. Focus your attention there. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't, you can change. Try to see what kind of breathing feels good for you right now. This way you develop your own powers of perception, your own powers of discernment. Because the Buddha can tell us for days and days and days all about the Dharma. But if we don't use our own powers of perception, we're not going to see it. We're not going to understand it. We hear stories about people in the past listening to the Dharma once and becoming arahants, or getting the Dharma eye, becoming non-returners. So what's the difference between them and us? We listen to the Dharma until our ears are all wet, and still we don't gain anything. Well, it's because they took what the Buddha told them and then applied it inside and used their own powers of observation to see what was going on, to decide what if he said this should be abandoned, how to abandon it. If he said something should be developed, how to develop it. In other words, they depended on his guidance, but they also depended on themselves. This is in line with that principle. The time when Ananda went to see the Buddha and he said half of the holy life is having admirable friends. And the Buddha said, no, it's the entirety of the holy life. That doesn't mean the, your admirable friends are going to do the work for you. But part of admirable friendship is not simply having good friends, but it's also learning how to emulate their good qualities. If they're people of conviction, you try to develop conviction too. If they're people of virtue, you try to develop your own virtue. If they have the quality of generosity, you try to be generous as well. And when they're discerning, you have learned how to learn to be discerning in your own mind. Because that's where the real problems are. Things come and go in the mind, and we don't really see them. They push us around. And we let ourselves get pushed around, because we think we're pushing ourselves around. Actually, it's just thoughts coming into the mind, good or bad. We should take some time to look into them. So you got the mind really quiet so you can see what's coming, what's going. As I mentioned the other night, we sweep the, the pad every day up at the top of the hill. And one of the benefits of that is that if any animals come through, we can see the footprints. Raccoons come through, snakes come through, we know, because we can see their prints. And that's because we've cleaned the place. So the prints appear clearly. It's the same in your own mind. If you want to see things going on in your mind, you have to get the mind really still. Then the slightest movement comes in, you know, and then you can do something about it. If everything in the mind is running around, then something new comes in. You don't see it. You don't understand it because there's just too much distraction. So get your mind really still if you can, and then watch it, and then you'll be in a much better position to develop your own discernment in line with what the Buddha pointed out. We depend on him, but we also have to depend on ourselves. That way we, we become our own refuge, atahi atanonato. The self is its own refuge. Well, it can be its own refuge only when you train it. And you train it in line with what the Buddha recommended, but you have to do the training. The Buddha can't stand there with a whip and a chair and treat you like a lion in a circus. You have to train yourself. But he doesn't leave you adrift. He gives you all kinds of good guidance. It's simply a matter of learning how to understand what he teaches and then applying it to you, what's going on in your mind right now. And that way you can get the most benefit out of hearing the Dharma as well.